NWA Wrestling with six-time NWA World Champion Lou Thez and Bob Hines. Thank you, Steve. Welcome to UWA Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Have some great matches in store for you today. We have Louis Martinez, Boyette, Bruce Swayze, Sheik Sanchez, uh, a great wrestler named Tommy Siegler, the spoiler, Ray Parker, some really outstanding matches. And we have a really fine guest ring announcer, a really illustrious man, very happy to have him with us, Bob Hines. Would you take it, Bob? Thank you, champ. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm surprised they have me back, but since they do, it's my pleasure if you'll ring the bell to get these wrestlers out here. Give it a yank. 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 Oh, here we go. All right, let's get them out here while we're waiting for them to get that bell fixed up. There it is. All right, the referee for this first bout, which would be one fall in 10 minutes, is Wendell Burchett. Wendell is standing right back here, entering the ring now from Mexico City at 225 pounds, Luis Arriba Martinez! Give me a chance to get him up here. Let me get him up here, Louis. Louis, let me get him up here. Let me get him up here. Okay, climbing through right now. At 230 pounds from Hollywood, California. A beautiful Mike Boyette right there. Get up here. All right, here we go. <clears throat> beautiful Mike Boyette. He is something to watch. Something always happens when Mike enters the scene. And he's got his hands full with a man by the name of Louis Arriba Martinez. And although. Mike is a very competent wrestler, a karate expert and champion. Louis has been around for quite some time and knows where he's going. Okay, that bell is rung and the clock has started. He'd better get in there in a hurry or he, he, could, be, uh, he could be out of luck here in a couple of minutes. He could so. be counted out, Bob, you're so right. He could count him out with that, uh, that bell ringing. He has a 10 count on the floor there and if the referee begins to count and he doesn't do it, well, I think he's in there now. Well, the unexpected usually occurs with Mike Boyette in there. Uh-oh, he lost the crown, he's placed it in the corner. Keeps getting the count and going for it, champ. Well, each time that he releases a man, the count breaks, you see. He's, he's doing a five count on the break is what the referee is doing. He must break within the five count because if he doesn't, he will be disqualified. Well, they're both outside now. Well, that concrete floor makes for a hard wrestling mat, is all I can tell you, Bob. That boy, it is a wild fellow. He not only appears to be, but he is. Well, he sure is keeping uh, referee Wendell Burchett busy over there. He is. He's keeping everyone busy, and he's taking command. He's really taking charge of this match. And, and finally, when he... Louis do that much catching, Bob. I'm sorry. That's okay. He's, uh, he weakens his man, then he goes into the ring. Well, he, he tries to psych him out with his appearance, probably, and his strange dress, but he did it physically today. Those are heavy boots. Now that count again started all over again because uh, he didn't give him a chance to get in there. Oh, and right against the post with a butt. You know, wrestling is not like it was many years ago, Bob. Uh, a thing like this would not have been permitted, but uh, wrestling like all the other sports, including even some of the amateur sports, the rules have been changed and relax to make them better spectator sports, and that's what has occurred over the years. Uh -huh. That Louis has certainly done some catching. I, He's taken a lot. Him. 
He's taking a lot. He keeps that great body of his in some beautiful condition. And it really disturbs me to see it abused. Oh, he's got him straddling the corner post. Well, that, that steel ring post, bending his leg around it now. Now he's bending the other one. This could very well end the match because that steel post doesn't give it all. That lawyer is right on the ball. He's yelling a riba. Of course, Louis all fired up because he feels he's giving him some of what he deserves. That was a good chop. A real, real good chop. A judo chop. And Louis yells a riba and fires himself up, and the adrenaline flows with him. Sorry, that sort of conduct is going to be curbed, and there's going to be some reprimands. They're, they're going to have to stay away from the TV equipment, from us. Well, that Costello came in with a cattle prod. They pinned Louis Martinez. That should not be permitted. That should not be permitted. Uh, Mike Boyette is gone completely wild. He's putting the boots to Louis Martinez. A disqualification is in order here. There was an assist by Al Costello with that cattle prod that is not permitted. Ring that bell. I'll see what Mr. Bruchette does about this. That was an illegal maneuver. Okay, five and a half minutes. It was called, but a Louis is chasing beautiful Mike Boyette. It was five and a half minutes, and Boyette was declared the winner. Louis Arriba is not a happy man right now. But Mike Boyette has left. Yes, and uh, and Al Costello did get up here. He did come up. What do you, you call it? What? The man is interfering. Al Costello is interfering. He's using the cattle prod or whatever he's got, and the match goes to Louis. And Louis no, I don't care. I don't want no match this way. I don't want matches this way. If I can't beat the man right here, I don't want any matches. And furthermore, this is not going to end here. This is just the beginning. Whoever this individual is, whoever this animal is, this is not the end. This is not the end because we got you in an eight-man tag match, but I'd like nothing to better than finish it right here, right now. Well, we don't even know where he came from because uh, he isn't. I don't care where he came from, but I'll tell you one thing. When I, when I get through with him, he can where he came from. Okay, that's it. You've heard it now from Luis Arriba Martinez. And he has been declared the winner because of, uh, of what the man did. We'll take a time out. We'll be right back with our second match for this presentation. Hi folks, back to the wrestling action and our great announcer, our guest announcer, Bob Hines in the ring. Take it, Bob. Okay, champ, thank you very much. Now, our second match on this card, a 10 minute time limit. Introducing at 229 pounds from Sarasota, Florida, Bruce Swayze. And behind me, under the tutelage of gentleman Saul Weingroff, this is Ava the Islander from Pego Pego. 
305 pounds, Apa. And with instructions from Wendover Shet, we're ready to go with a 10 minute time limit. Now, Bruce has a great body, Bob. He works very hard at it, and he's in great, great condition at all times. Well, he'll have to be now. There's no doubt about that. 305 pounds for uh, AFA, and at 229 pounds, he's outweighed by uh, over 75 pounds, yes. almost 75 pounds. Yes. You know, it's a strange thing, however. Uh, once you become a heavyweight, like I'm saying in the area of 210 pounds or greater, it seems that you can pretty well cope with anyone, no matter how large they are. And what compensates for that is a smaller man has greater speed normally. In this case, I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does move. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we stepped up there. We saw him doing some footwork, getting loosened up. Uh, he's a strong, powerful man, too. But Oh, slippery there. Not slippery enough. That Ava is so powerful. He has tremendous strength. Okay, Bruce is complaining now that uh, Afa grabbed his hair and flipped him over with the use of that hair. Well, he uh, would like to disarm his man, too, you know. He would like to, for Afa to be on a defensive so he can do his thing, you know. He's pretty cute. Well, Bruce started a thing and elbow smash, and he, wow. Almost <laughs> out. <laughs> There's a lot of action here. He's really hung up there, as you say. Yes, as the expression goes, right? <laughs> that hurt him a little bit. It takes a lot of power to fling a fellow across the ring and hang him in the ropes like that. It's just inconceivable for most people to imagine sort of power that a body like that's uh, stored. Oh, that was illegal. That, that yeah, was there's two of those now we've right. seen. Uh, that was a karate thumb. That is not legal. But he hides it, you know. He conceals it from the referee. He spins his man around. Oh. Oh, Afa gave it right back to him. Well, the Saucy Islanders are pretty well familiar with the martial arts, so Bruce is not going to show Afa anything he hasn't seen before. He's rubbing his eyes. He's uh, keeping his back, of course, to the uh, referee, uh, Wendell Burchett. Now he's trying to rub those eyes along. Oh, oh. <clears throat> now Bruce has a lot of determination. He does not stop. It looks like Afa doesn't either. He's making a comeback right away. Right across the ring. Almost the full length of that ring. Wow. Ooh, he missed the punch and went out. Okay. Well, was assist, though. Apparently, there's an assist by Bruce on the way over the rope. And it was throwing over the top rope is an automatic disqualification. And it was a loft. Afa threw a punch, but it was an assist by Bruce. Okay, you saw it. There was only uh, four or five minutes, and Wendell Burchett, the referee, has uh, has given the uh, the match because of that toss. Come over here, Wendell. Hey, when he threw uh, when he threw uh, Afa right up over the top, how did you call that? Well, the rules are over the top rope is an automatic disqualification, and that's what Swayze did. He threw him over the top. Okay. Well. Yeah. 
Okay, up and over the top, he called in, and again, uh, Ape of the Islander has been declared the winner of this, the second match. It looks like we might have a little action down there. Gentleman Saul Weingroff does not look like he wants to be a gentleman right now. And they're pushing Bruce Swayze back. Okay, they're having some words as they march out. And again, uh, even outside the ring, it looks like we've got to get a break in here in just a moment. We're trying to keep them apart, but they're over there in the corner in front of the camera. And they are in a dark corner, they're, uh, and they're still at it. You can't see it because they're going out the door and they're still wrestling all the way out. Okay, there, Brian. Once again, uh, Wendell has raised Apa's hand, and Wafa, Apa has been declared the winner. I think it only counts as one match, though. All right, we'll take time out. We'll be right back with our third match on this card. Now back to the ring for more action, and our great announcer, our guest announcer, Bob Hines, is going to take over. Okay. Take it, Bob. All right, thanks again, champ. We're all set to go now with our third match on this card. Coming in now, just down below, is the Sheik, as you can see. This is Sheik Sanchez. We'll introduce him in just a moment when he gets up here into the ring, so you can all get a look at him before he goes to work. He'll be taking on in just a moment. The UWA champion, Pistol Pez Watley. We're looking for him right now. Pistol Pez has not made his appearance. Here he comes right now. There's no reason why he wouldn't come charging out. Here <coughs> and he is now climbing up in the ring. So let's do our introduction for this time. At 240 pounds from Saudi Arabia. What you to mean? <coughs> Sheik Sanchez right here. The Sheik. And at 230 pounds from Chattanooga, Tennessee, the UWA heavyweight champion, Pistol Pez Watley. Okay, the referee for this match will be BJ McElwee right over here. He's having a little trouble keeping them apart. We'll get out of the ring, get that clock started, and get a good, good wrestling match going here. Champ. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Pistol Pez Watley is without question the finest wrestler in the world today. I've done a lot of globe trotting in the wrestling game. And when I saw this young man several years ago, I was impressed. But I'm so mightily impressed now that he has a track record that's nearly unbeatable. Uh, I was in Montreal recently, Bob, and there was a tournament up there. And this young man handily won the tournament. And some of the Russian gold medal winning stars, they all walked away from him. He won his matches in 10, 20, 30 seconds. And that's how good he is. Fantastic wrestler. Two-time amateur heavyweight champion of the state of Tennessee. And the Sheik is going through a lot of gyrations and saying a prayer. And in my opinion, Bob, he's going to need it. Yeah, he, uh, he was calling Allah there. The crowd was getting on him. It uh, broke his concentration on his prayer. And maybe that it's an omen of something to come. You know, Bob, one day at ringside, one of the fighters, I was in a fight, in, uh, uh, witnessing a fight in New York. One of the fighters blessed himself as he left the ring, and, and one of the spectators said, Father, will that help him? He said, well, it will if he has a good right hand. That's right. You remember the story? <laughs> yes, well, that's, that's right. the story here, too. <laughs> it will if he knows how to wrestle, right? right? <laughs> okay, he's got a few of his own tactics going here against the champ. He is aggressive. Now that's smarts. The whole uh, the whole studio is shut down. Well, I think not only the ring. Mm -hmm. What the Sheik I think is trying to do is trying for a real quick win because I don't think over the long haul he can cope with Pez. something in his hand there Tim. yes he did I don't know what it was he's concealing something 
Oh, he has tape on his hands. He's got tape on those two fingers, but it looked like he had something else. He's sure doing a dance on him now. He's, he's working Pez over pretty well. I'm surprised that he's doing as well as he is. He's reaching back inside of his... Uh, Wrestling trunks, there, He's yes. got something there again. We can't see what it is, but... B.J. McElwee is a very swift referee. He's trying his hardest to see, and it looks like as he walks away, once again, he's putting something away, but it's impossible to tell what it is from this angle. Once again, he is... Uh... Oh. oh, he took one there. Has really okay. nailed him on that one. Oh. He's reaching back in there. He's got something out. He's trying to defend himself. He has the foreign object. What is it he's got there? We don't know. But whatever it is, he just poked the champ again into the midsection, and he slid it down into his boot that time, champ. And once well, again, he's... he shows BJ. BJ is now looking in. The referee is looking at his trunks, sees nothing. Four minutes have passed now in uh, in this match. I'm really surprised, Bob. The Sheik has done as well as he has with Pez. It takes a great, great wrestler, great athlete to cope with him. Oh, right across the ring and down hard. Oh, Look at that leg kick. kick. Oh, he oh. missed with that one. He missed the drop kick. That's unusual for him. A little over anxious. Oh, he ducked right underneath that and it pushes his man in. Rollover, Rick Roman backdrop rollover. Beautiful, what a beautiful thing. Four and a half minutes, champ. Just a great wrestling hold. It takes a lot of wrestling experience to be able to execute something like that. Great reflex, which proves again that Pistol Pez really knows where, where he is going. When you talk about wrestling, you think about Pistol Pez. Great wrestler. Okay, as uh, the champion gets his belt back in just four and a half minutes. Well, this is our third match. The UWA champion, Pistol Pez Watley, has defeated the Sheik. The winner, Pistol Pez Watley, right over here. He keeps his belt, of course, so that was not a championship match, but there he is, along with BJ McElroy. Okay, tag team's coming up, and uh, another match before that. But right now, let's take time out for these words. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get back into the action in just a moment. We've got some great, great wrestling in store for you. And the wrestlers are on the way out. And Bob Hines, our guest announcer, is going to be with me in just a second. I was really pleased with the last match with Pistol Pez Watley. He was wearing the old original heavyweight wrestling championship belt, which is symbolic of the heavyweight wrestling championship. It was worn by Ed Stranger Lewis, Jim Landis, and I also wore it several times. And it's the finest belt that the world has ever manufactured in wrestling. Lorenzo Parenti in there, and a very good competitor by the name of Troy Graham. And up to Bob Hines, please. Okay, thank you very much again, uh, Luke. We're back in the ring. We're set for our fourth match on this card, okay? I'm getting pushed around here a little bit myself, uh, getting in the way. I'm trying to stop doing that. First of all, this is one fall, 10 minute time limit. Let's meet over here in the right hand corner at 260 pounds from Tampa, Florida, Troy Graham. Troy Graham. And at 240 pounds from Italy, Lorenzo 
Parente! Parente! DJ McAlee is your referee. <clears throat> well, again, we have a great wrestler in the ring by the name of Lorenzo Parenti. Very well respected throughout the entire wrestling world. I've been in many parts of the world uh, while Lorenzo was wrestling there. He's done very well wherever he's been. Now lives in Nashville, owns a fine restaurant, does a little wrestling on the side, does his road work every morning. And uh, I'm really pleased to be able to have him, to make a match for him on occasion. Uh, a pleasure to work with, a fine gentleman, a great wrestler. You know, Bob, the years you put in the gymnasium really pays off because Lorenzo did that and he always comes up with something that maybe the youngsters haven't seen. He's another man that uh, believes in conditioning. I, you might have made those comments as I walked over here, champ, uh, back from the ring and, and uh, joined you. He has a new approach to several things, and it's, as I say again, it's, it's a cross between European and our American style, which is a cross between Greco-Roman and freestyle, and it really makes for a great competitive wrestler. I have an opportunity, champ, to walk in and uh, to the different dressing rooms and see some of the wrestlers and just chat with them because, of course, it's important that I get to know who they are. It's, this is something new for me as we see uh, Troy crawling outside the ropes. Get in there and talk to them, and uh, you see the intensity uh, with which some of them are, are pacing up and down the dressing rooms out there and uh, getting set for, uh, for a match. Don't know what's going to happen. Well, the warm-ups and, and, and getting ready for the ring is a very important part of the match. And I'm sure that like Lorenzo and this Troy, Graham, before they got in there, they did 30 to 45 minutes of warm-up work. It's very necessary because in the event one must make a very fast move at the beginning, he could be injured if he weren't warm. He did pull Lorenzo's hair, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And uh, Lorenzo is especially upset because he doesn't have an awful lot to... Uh... That's what happened to me, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're making pointed remarks. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you do lose some here that way. And another way we lose it is by bridging. Bridging on the mat and, and exercising the neck. And it, it sure is tough on the hair, I'll I'm tell scratching you. Scratching it out. Sure does. The friction, sure. Yeah. Okay, once again. Uh, beautiful four behind takedown. Good takedown, but he slid right across on his back and he's outside the ropes yeah. once again. Every moment that you spend in a gymnasium to learn your craft really pays off later in life. Oh, he hung on that time. He was oh, on his sure. way back and might have missed. Now, was Lorenzo's it? too cute for most of them. He sure <laughs> is. It was a good move because then he got his man and... Uh, a tough spot, and he took him down. Lorenzo is a short couple fellow. He weighs about 240, and he doesn't appear to be that heavy. Very, very strong. In the ropes. Should be a clean break. BJ was right in there. Beautiful. A very fine referee. Wow. And Graham is doing his thing. And another kick and another throw. Man! Oh, that's, uh, that's a little tough on the throat. Good fracture of sternum. That, that happens on occasion. They're throwing him in there. The lumps are being dealt out tonight. Okay, BJ is watching him very closely now as to right into that post again. Now, now those turnbuckles are padded, but they are made of steel. That's right. It's in the corner there. Oh! Oh! Out of the way, just in time. 
that could be disastrous. We're at the five-minute mark. The five-minute mark of uh, this, the fourth match on this card. Oh, that's a tremendous he, amount of power. That that's called using your ropes. <laughs> he knows the ropes, doesn't he? <laughs> <coughs> Double elbow. Sure was a double elbow. And, uh, gives them a lot more power to put the hands together and do it with two arms. <coughs> That's in the throat. Oh, again. Lorenz threw one in there then, but that Troy Graham can take a punch. Oh, he almost had a fall, and as he came off, BJ got thrown off into the corner. Small package. Beautiful. Okay. Again. That's what wrestling is all about. Troy Graham looked real good, and he was. He did have the advantage, and Lorenzo turned a disadvantage into advantage and pinned his man with a thing called a small package. Beautifully done. Okay, there's a little argument here uh, that Troy is giving to uh, BJ. <coughs> but BJ McAwee has declared Lorenzo Parente the winner in six minutes. Oh. Lorenzo Parente. Two balls that time. And a few scratches and a few scars on his body. Well, I'm out here, folks, and I'm going to stay out here for just a moment until these uh, wrestlers leave the studio. But we'll take time out. We'll be right back with our final tag team match after these words. Great wrestling match in store right now. We have a team match. That's between Tommy Siegler, one of the finest athletes in the world today, against a young man by the name of Terry Meeker, a fine, fine young man, a good athlete, against Cowboy Parker and the Spoiler. And uh, they should not have Al Costello with them. This should be a great, great match. I'm very high on Tommy. Uh, he's championship timber. He could make it any time. And Costello is here. I didn't think he would be. You're going to have to rep be reprimanded, Mr. Costello, or you'll have to leave the building, I'm sorry. You will be put out of the building. You were put in a cage, and you can be put out of the building also. Okay, we're up here uh, in the ring, it, and uh, our matchmaker, Lou says the champion has had a few words with Kangaroo Al Costello. Al, Al, Al we missed that one. He's coming by. What happened over there? What did the champ say to you? What did he say? Yeah. Don't worry me. This is the greatest tag team this side of the Black Stump. The epitome of the millennium. Okay. You got Look, Hines, I want you to quit stuttering and stammering and get on with the announcing. Okay, okay. I'm going to start with you because, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure, a great pleasure to introduce at 255 pounds from Mule Shoe, Texas, Cowboy Ray Parker right here. From parts unknown, his tag team partner, the Spoiler. And of course, their manager, Kangaroo Al Costello. Behind me, I'd like to introduce at this time, from Belton, South Carolina, at 233 pounds, <coughs> Tommy Siegler. Siegler. And his tag team partner, from Tapello, Mississippi, at 243 pounds, Terry Meeker, Terry Meeker. And Wendell Burchette is your referee. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a great, great athlete in here tonight by the name of Tommy Siegler and his partner, a young man by the name of Terry Meeker. Uh, I'm very enthused about having these two people here. Uh, I hope they do well. They're up against some tough competition. But Tommy is very, very able, probably as good as anyone in the world today. So I'm not too fearful about I'm taking too much advantage of Tommy. Uh, I'm sure that he will uh, team very well with this young man by the name of Meeker and protect him. 
<clears throat> Good headlock. Sure was, and Tommy wasted no time in taking uh, the cowboy down. And with the arms that Tommy has on him, you can see why that headlock works so well. <laughs> There's a man that does his training. Right over the cowboy and an elbow to the spoiler. Another headlock. A very hole that the, the great Ed Strang Lewis made famous, the side headlock. <coughs> Al Costello at ringside, and he, of course, attempts to assist his men, but we're going to keep an eye on him tonight. All right, Terry Meeker. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of Terry Champ. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. Well, he's a young man, he's from Tupelo, Mississippi. He's done some uh, amateur wrestling. Uh, slipped a little bit there. Well, he did a good takedown. A... I can see that he has a good amateur background from the moves that he makes, and I'm very happy he's in there with a seasoned veteran like uh, Tommy Siegler. Tommy knows where he's going, and if he would coach Terry just a wee bit, I think the young man would be right up on top. Terry needs a tag at this point. He should get away from these fellows. They got him trapped over there in the corner, and they're double teaming him. And uh, they sure are. there's nothing that uh, Tommy can do to help out his oh. partner. Oh, there's wow, a tough got elbow. Got tough elbow. Cut him coming in. Oh, oh. foot right in the solar plexus. Uh, poor Terry is doing some catching. He needs a tag. He needs he a sure tag is. He needs some help as here as soon as possible. Well, he's young a young is still in there. He sure is. He's a young fellow, and he's up against uh, a couple of hombres over here that know every single move in the book. So uh, it's tough for a young fellow. This is called baptism under fire, but he came back that time. He's got a knees down on top of the spoiler. Here comes Tommy. Wow. Cowboy pulled him off, and Tommy wasted no time in getting right over here and working on the cowboy. And as Wendell Burchett, the referee, is chasing Tommy back. They've got the young Terry, Terry Meeker down. is taking it. Oh. That Parker throws him in there. He sure does. He threw a real roundhouse that time. Well, I really have a lot of admiration for this young man. Well, okay. Costello is interfering again. Look at Ziegler's after Ziegler will, uh, Ziegler's after Kangaroo. Ziegler He's leaving him. Meeker alone oh, in the ring with Cowboy time. and Spoiler. And it looks like uh, Ziegler would like to get his hands on Kangaroo. Well, they once again double team young Terry Meeker. That young man has taken a lot of abuse, but he has a resiliency to stay in there. He does, but uh, Ty, there's no way even if uh, he was at the corner, he could have helped Tommy or gotten Tommy in there a couple of times because uh, Tommy was chasing uh, kangaroo uh, Al Costello around over here. Well, All right, here oh, oh. oh, boy. Tommy looks a little young upset. Man there's really Tommy taken. comes in there. All right, there's Costello is going up those stairs again, champ. If that Seagull catches him, he's liable to go right back down those stairs on his head. Oh. Crystal Pez, that's, there is the man of the hour. Watch him go. Okay, a little help he right there. Pistol Pez, Pistol Pez does not like this type of action at all. He saw how they uh, they were working over one at a time, not just two of them, but three of them working over the Meeker Sigler tag team. Pistol Pez came out there. I can't imagine a stronger team than Pistol Pez and Tommy Sigler. That would be the epitome. That would be it. Oh, that would be a wild match. Inadvertently, matches like this are made. Take these two young men could handle just about anything. Siegler and Pistol. Oh, they do much better when they're double teaming, it seems. Uh oh. 
Well, Costello finally caught him. Costello got a good one there. That Costello is just Costello deserves. slipped down the stairs, and he's sitting on that bottom step, and he is in pain. The spoiler's been thrown out. The cowboy has been thrown All out. All right, well, let's let you only, know what is in store for these people if they ever come against these only boys. Only six minutes of this match. Tommy almost gave a kick there from the steps. They've done a little matchmaking for me tonight. I can see what's going to happen here, Bob. I'm going to put Pistol in there with Tommy Siegler, and we're going to... I've got a couple of ideas we're going to expedite. These are the boys that can do it. Well, you take a young fellow like that uh, Terry Maker, who looked awfully good, but you're going to you double team a young fellow like that with the, the likes of the Cowboy and the Spoiler, and a little bit of help from uh, Costello, and you know things are well, going to get a little bit Well, you gentlemen got a lesson, didn't you? You got your Did lesson. You have it planted back there and running in on us. He's a champion. That's the only way you can do it. He's just a champion. He's a dirty, underhanded trick. He gave you, is, gave you a wrestling you've lesson. You've been mouthing off for four weeks. You brought two of them out there. You brought four. Wait a minute. I'll be Finally have the competition. Well, they have the competition. They cannot handle it. Okay, we're point. over here by the table again. Anything can happen. This is a competition. The crowd's crying for action. They're lining up now. Not, not, oh. Really something. He's oh, and the Cowboy and Pistol Pez really it. knocking it out. The spoiler Parker steps in. He believe. takes one. The Cowboy throws an elbow. They're double teaming right now. Costello. Costello has got. Costello has got uh, Tommy Siegler tied up over there. The referee is trying to help him. And so the spoiler and the Cowboy both turned on the champ. Pistol Pez Watley. It looks like Terry Maker is coming to a little bit. He may be in there to give a little bit of help. But well, it looks like Parker and Costello and the spoiler have had enough. They have left. Okay, uh, let's get over here for just a couple of minutes if we can. Can we talk to them? They're getting a little bit of Tommy uh, Siegler. Like looks pistol. like he's there. That's a great idea, Bob. Beautiful. And see if we can't get them over here. We might talk to this uh, young Terry Meeker, too, in just a couple of moments. Okay, I'll tell you what we'll have to do. Let's take a fast timeout. We'll see if we can't get uh, Tommy Siegler over here. And also, so Pistol Pez Watley, and we'll uh, find out a little more about uh, Terry Maker in just a moment. But right now, we'll take a time out for these words. Be right back. Okay, there's still, um, again, Tommy Siegler's over there, and Pistol Pez Watley is with him. That, uh, that was one of the rougher battles we've seen. Uh, double teaming all the way down the line. Uh, no man really had a, a full chance to wrestle one-on-one -on -one with anybody there uh, toward the last couple of moments. Uh, but these two guys working together, uh, Mr. Matchmaker, it sounds like there's something, there could be some great action there. Well, uh, one doesn't have to be too bright to see this. This would be the greatest piece of matchmaking in the world as a team, these two men together. Two of the greatest wrestlers in the world today, uh, champion Pistol Pez Watley and Tommy Siegler. Uh, both great condition men. They know they're wrestling very well. Uh, they could work as a team and very well, I'm sure. And uh, well, you just made some matchmaking, gave me some matchmaking well, ideas, Pistol. What about it? Well, Lou, I just want to tell you and tell all those people out there that uh, Tommy Siegler is one of the finest wrestlers in the business today. And also, he's a very good friend of mine. And I'll be doggone. If I'm gonna let two chumps like that and a funny man, funny hat, kangaroo hat wearing man come out there in the middle of the ring and try to ruin or try to humble or hurt a good friend of mine just like Tommy Siegler. Okay, we're talking to a couple of uh, class wrestlers there. They are called class wrestlers, there's no doubt about that whatsoever. As a matter of fact, we've watched them uh, opposing each other in the ring a couple of times and uh, they're, they're what it's all about. They're, they're what this game is all about. This, well, they have a great deal of respect for each other. And uh, I love to see a thing like this where men have admiration for each other. But as a team, they did some in inadvertent matchmaking tonight. And Tommy, how, what are your thoughts about the possibility of having a team match with Pez and maybe combining a thing and putting something together to handle this Parker, Parker and Spoiler and Costello? I'll tell you, I, I couldn't ask for a better partner than Pez Watley, and I want to thank Pez for coming out here when I was in trouble. I, I was about to be hurt very badly in there by this, these three men, and I want to thank Pez for coming in there and saving me. But Lou, I want to say to you, I've, I've told you before, I, I'd like to get in the ring with either one of these men, one at a time, or get in there with three of them, and there's three on my team. 
They don't, they don't stick around too long when the sides are even. Well, when Pez came in, I could see that he not only equalized things, but they, they left in a real big hurry. You people right. have proven that you can get the job done, and I'm going to work very hard to make a match. And I've, I've got something in my mind right now, and Bob's going to tell everyone about it in just a little bit. And I, I talked to Bob while they were doing this fighting. I said, I have a fantastic idea, and we have something put together that's going to take care of Parker Spoiler and Costello. Okay, and these, of course, uh, uh, Cowboy Spoiler and Costello were watching and listening to our comments and hear about putting these two men together on a tag team and uh, came running back in. Uh, I don't think they want to. They're really ready to mix it up right now. Well, something happened last night. We wrestled here uh, this past week, rather, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, and Parker Spoiler and Costello had an assist from a fellow by the name of Mike Boyette. Well, I have an idea, something that hasn't been done here. I want an eight-man tag team match. And we've got the men right here that can handle the whole situation. Pez, would you go for an eight-man tag team match? Would, would you go for an eight-man? And look here, you just put me in there with them, and we'll get up there together, and I'll show you just how to wrestle them. And I'll tell you what, all you got to do is get up there in that ring. Just get in the ring, gentlemen. Right now. I'd like to put this call against that boy right up there for that belt. He's been dodging me. He's been dodging the cowboy. We want to make the issue right now. We want that belt. We want that belt. Why don't you try that boy? Try your luck. Go ahead. Yeah, Fez, that's your boy, all right. The only reason he won the belt is because he was the only contest contestant in the tournament. That's a reason. Okay, we're going to have to watch right for this. That's Champ, we're just going to have to keep our eyes out he for this. And, uh, no, no, you know, we can't. We can't get them together the right now. We gotta save it. And, uh, you say you got some good ideas. Well, let me tell you about our ideas. Okay, we'll we've got to. Uh, as long as they get in that square circle up there, we'll take on anybody, anytime, and we'll beat their brains out and we'll hurt them bad. That's right, because our main objective is to punish, pulverize, demoralize these blooming blokes. Because we not only baffle, befuddle, confuse, annoy, and antagonize, but with our diversified attack, we'll annihilate them. That's what we're going to do. Mr. Costello, yes, sir. how do you feel oh, about oh, wrestling oh, an eight-man tag team match against you. people like this? It'll be our pleasure, because we'll annihilate them. You see what happened? You see what kind of cowards they are? We come up to the ring, and they don't even let us have a chance to get in the ring. Well, you know, why don't you try to get in? And they attack because they right that shows what kind of sportsmanship they got. Because they model call each other. They're can so we have in love five with more minutes with them? Can we have five more minutes? Can we have five minutes? You certainly can. You may go in there. I would like I to don't, make... I don't think they're going to make it in there. I hope they do. I think oh, it would wait be Oh, wait a minute. They're going to let them in. They are going to let them in. I think that's great. They did. They held them back. They are going to let them in there. You know, I have a little dream that I'm working on right now. If I can put an eight-man tag team match together, Bob, this would be fantastic. Okay, we've got, we've got the eight-man... Uh... And that hasn't been done with men of this caliber. That would be a big match. Come on, oh, 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 oh. Here comes that pistol. See? He is something. There goes, oh, he gave him a, a big shot. That, that There's Costello again. again. It's three against two. There's no doubt about it. With that Costello around, it's three against Watch two. Watch him go now. Watch that Pez go. It's Costello that's doing all of the damage right now. He's gotten at both pistol Pez Watley. As bad as it was, I think we were better off with that uh, I kangaroo. I think that pistol Pez is something. He and that Ziegler will probably make the most aggressive team that I've seen. And I can see right now who's going hey, to win Mr. the match, Mr. Matchmaker, Mr. Parker. You want to go up and ask him, do they want another five if they can take it? They can take it pretty well. They've proven to me they're going to beat you, gentlemen. Have you seen the awesome power, my two blokes? I can see the awesome power. The, the greatest tag team this side of the next cup. The antithony of the millennium. Watch him. He's coming out the board. Now, bless you, Kyle. Let's go. That's typical. That's typical. That's a little more scientific than what you've done. Okay, been we got a problem here with. Uh... Okay, wow. Tommy's getting quite upset, and of course. Uh... We have mentioned now well, Bob, about the eight-man tag team. That's what I'm going to Some put Some of the together. world's greatest wrestlers will be together. Tommy, I want to put together an eight-man tag team match. You and Pez, and you're the men that you have. Will you wrestle in it? 
I'll wrestle in any kind of match against those guys as long as the sides are even, or if I'm in there against either one of them one-on-one. -on -one. There's an eight-man tag. How would you like that, baby? I like it very much. I even like it more so. All you people come out there and see this, because we going to put them away. Al Costello, we send you back to Australia. OK, there you heard it. Thank you very uh, much, gentlemen. Pistol Pez Watley and Tommy Sigler. That's it for uh, this match and uh, this program. For Luthez, six-time world champion, I'm Bob Hines. Have a good day. See you one week from today, right here. See you later. Thank you very much, Bob.